Howdy. Another video where we're not in the single lock room. Whoa, I know, it's insane. So, today we're going to be showing another video against disruption, right? Going for the demolishers, because since, you know, that's like kind of popular now. Amartis and people trying to get Dante. So this build is actually not of my own creation. So the person I got the idea from is a smaller YouTuber by the name of Voltage. It's a V-O-L-T-A-Z-H. Probably butchered that name. If so, I'm very sorry. But he does amazing videos showing off Warframes that he takes to level cap with really cool builds. Um, he's actually where I initially got my inspiration to start playing Atlas from. And if it not for him, I would have never really gotten into Atlas. And now Atlas is one of my favorite frames. So he did a video on Excalibur, taking Excalibur to level cap on the Sorry. Mars disruption against the Mars Grenier, I believe it was. And he was using a Heat Excalibur build for Exalted Blade and destroying level 9k the Demolishers like they were nothing. And I was like, that is really cool. I want to try that. I want to make a build on that. I wanted to make my own version of it. So first off, he was using normal Excalibur, not Excalibur Umbra. So the reason for that is because Excalibur Umbra is passive, where he exhibits sentience when you exit into your operator. When you do that, it actually clears all of the buffs that are from your helmets or allies. So that can really, really screw you over. But in the Dante and Bound update, we got a new augment called Warrior's Rest, where you get plus 15% strength and it disables the passive. And that makes it so usually you still have all of your buffs if you exit your Warframe and go into your Operator. Now, it might still be better to run normal Excalibur, because then if you want, you can use a different X-list like Prime Sure Footed for the people that care about that. Otherwise, I like Excalibur Umbra more, because, you know, you get to... If you want, you can have him be using the Excalibur Umbra skin as well as the helmet and stuff. And he has a lot higher energy cap. So if we go compare him to normal Excalibur, he's got a bit higher armor and way higher energy pool. 175 instead of 100. And that makes things a lot comfier. So, well, at that, and honestly, the biggest reason is I didn't want to go rebuild Excalibur and put another, like, 8 form on him. That sounded like a pain in the ass. So, we're using normal Excalibur. Or sorry, Excalibur Umbra instead of normal Excalibur. So, the gist of the build is you're going to want to prime, of course, because that's usually how it works, especially on Demolishes at 9k. And then you are going to decimate the enemy with massive, massive heat procs from your Exalted Blade. So... We'll go over the build. We have Roar instead of his 1, because Roar gives a massive damage buff. That's a faction damage multiplier that double dips, meaning, you know, even bigger damage. We've got Radial Howl, of course, for blinding, because that's part of his kits. That's actually really good crowd control, though in this build it is quite expensive to use. Radial Javelin, because with the Augment Furious Javelin, every enemy tagged gets 15% melee damage for 16 seconds. The damage is affected by strength, and the duration is affected by duration. What's so good about this is a while back, DE changed it so that there's no cap on it. You, like, however many enemies you hit, you'll get a big damage buff if it's, if it's a big crowd. Like, if there's 50 enemies, you are going to tag 50 enemies and get a massive damage buff. And on top of that, they made it a multiplicative damage buff to base damage mods, just like Eclipse. So if you tag a bunch of enemies, you can get a really, really big damage buff. The downside is that recasting it will reset the initial damage buff. So if you cast it and tag 20 enemies, and then you cast it again and tag one enemy, you're going to get the damage buff from that one enemy. So it can be difficult to keep a big damage buff up at all times, but it's still a very, very strong augment. Chromatic Blade so that we can change the base damage to an elemental damage, and which will be fire. Heat, specifically, is what it's called. We have to have an orange emissive in the first emissive slots to make it that element. Because the, the color is what determines it. So orange would be fire or red. Blue-ish colors make it lightning. Greenish colors make it toxin. And whites or blackish colors make it ice. But in this case, we want heat, because we're going with the heat and hair build. 
equilibrium so that we don't run out of energy like crazy, prime flow, because energy pool, umbral intensify for strength. I did get rid of his two umbral forma slots because they're worthless. You don't need all three umbral mods on an Excalibur. It makes no sense. Prime continuity for duration. So Argon Vitality here because it doubles the heat procs that we apply with abilities, which affects Exalted Blade. Basically doubling our damage. This is very, very important. If you need, don't have it, you can farm it from call missions. It's really easy to get if you've done the new war and the Veilbreaker quest. If you don't want to do that, you can buy it from players. I think you can get an unranked one for pretty cheap, probably like 30 plat. And you don't need it ranked up. I'm, I just have this one because, I don't know, a little bit extra health if I do take damage. I, I, I'll probably sit at one shot either way, especially in endgame content. But you don't need it ranked at all is the point. So we'll actually put an unranked one on. Because the double heat on abilities is only for the mod itself. It's not affected by rank. Blind Rage for more strength on top of Umbral Intensify. Steel Charge for more damage to our melee, which also affects Exalted Blade. Arcane Strike here for attack speed, so I don't have to mod attack speed on our Exalted Blade. Molt Augmented, so we build up more strength to get more damage from our 3 and 4 and 1, right? So Roar will give us more damage, which double dips. Eclipse, or sorry, Radial Javelin, the Augment will give us more damage, and then the base damage will be increased on Exalted Blade, and the status chance will be increased, because the status chance increase from Chromatic Blade is affected by Strength as well. So Strength massively increases your damage. The more Strength you have, the more damage you will deal exponentially. It's just going to go up and up and up. We are using Epitaph as a primer, solely because it has Cold Procs, Otherwise, you can use anything else. Honestly, I'm only using Epitaph because I know people like it a lot. When I play this, I normally use Furris or Compressa. I've actually never even used this build with Epitaph, to be perfectly honest. But I know it's good because it has the cold procs, and that can help a lot when you're doing disruption if the guy gets away too fast or moves too fast. I don't find that to be an issue. Normally, he's dead before he can get anywhere close to the node, but... Epitaph is still good for that. So, because it has forced cold on its explosion from the normal fire when you don't charge it. We just have a heat and hair build, so you go scorch, heated charge, so you get as much heat on it as possible. I won't explain heat and hair here, but something else that would help is a faction mod. I don't like faction mods, though, so we will not be using a faction mod on the primer or the exalted blade. We have multi-shot, of course, and viral, so that there's viral procs on the enemy. Though, I mean, if you really wanted to get as many procs as possible, you could probably just forego this and go Nucor instead, really. Because this will apply way more statuses way faster, and you really want to get out as many viral statuses as you possibly can. So a heat primer on Nucor might be better, though you are giving up cold damage. Which, again, is unfortunate because it can slow the enemy down if you feel like you need that. But this way we can max off viral procs for more damage, which is nice. You don't need Cascadia Flare. This is not a damage build, even though I know it kind of looks like a damage build right here. But we can take Prime Target Tar Cracker off. We can put on Dexterity just for combo duration for our Exalted Blade. Though that doesn't matter, we're not going to be building up combo. And combo does not affect the damage of Exalted Blade or at least not for the normal attacks and, like, the the little waves it shoots out. Those are unaffected by combo multipliers. Though I do believe the heavy attack on the Exalted Blade is affected by its pistol ammo mutation for more ammo, because we run out of ammo like crazy on Kuba We can... Yeah, we'll... Keep, oh, no, this actually has radiation at base, so you actually don't need that. It would be better to have... This, for status duration, that's actually really important. Perpetual Agnes also works, so we'll put that on instead. And then finally, you are going to once... Dang, I'm totally brain farting. I forgot what the last mod was. You could double down on this. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember now, I remember. I was going to go stunning speed for status chance of reload speed, just for comfort. Not necessary, but it is nice. Also, if you want to max maximize your damage without not counting faction mod, you can go prime key to charge instead. But for now, we won't show it with that. We'll show it with normal key to charge. So you want to hit them with this first because 
how that with a heat inherit you need the primer to be the first heat proc so that's very important for our melee we have zorus just because it's nice it's comfy it kills stuff and we're going into armatus which has the murmur and the necromech guys so this can strip armor with corrosive and can spread it with melee influence we get electric because this has force electric procs on the heavy explosion when you throw it so typical zorus build here as you can see you don't need to run zorus it's just what i'm choosing then let's get to exalted blade we have both sacrificial mods you don't need disciplines of merit i was just testing it unnecessary quickening for even more attack speed i know i actually i think i said we don't mod attack speed because we have arcane strike but actually you can just for like even more attack speed combo count is relevant if you have prime fury that's better but i do not have prime fury so we're going quickening berserker fury isn't really good here because you need kills and we want to be able to just cast this destroy the necromech and then put our blade away bolts it impact for even more damage and it gives us more heat while cutting edge for more damage and status chance condition overload so we get big damage after priming with all of the elements more crit damage or getting crit damage via gladiator mine or can shatter and then obviously crit chance melee damage from these two right here if you wanted to you could go gladiator mites mods on your normal melee if you were to build up combo but again we're not doing that here so it's rather irrelevant then you narrow there is very important here because this is how we, we will be stripping armor if we can't strip armor we aren't going to be, do, be able to do nearly as much damage with caustic strike here we can fully armor strip with our operator also if we're using this we don't need prime sure foot or anything because we have poise so we basically get the equivalent of prime sure footed but on steroids because it's slow stagger and knockdown and it affects our operator and our warframe like this is prime prime true food it's really really good these are the only two things that matter here everything else is irrelevant so then we get our companion this is anything you want you don't even need a companion just slap on whatever you feel like you need now if you are struggling with energy you can go something like death cube or a diarrhea with this build right here, I'm not going to go over Manifold Bond and Arc Coil because most people know how that works. If you don't, I suggest watching a video. We'll get lots of survivability from Guardian, Synth Deconstruct for Health Orbs to get energy with Equilibrium, and Mystic Bond, which will proc all the time from Arc Coil and Manifold Bond, so we get free ability casts. And we get a crit damage final multiplier with Tenacious Bond by having our crit chance higher than at or higher than 50% on our companion weapon. So that's very nice. That's the gist of the build. So now we're going to go into a mission. I know that was a lot of talking. Uh, you know, eh, I got a melee on. We don't need a primary weapon here. So we will now actually show a demonstration of it. We will set it to solo. So blueberries don't like coming in and kill everything. And then we can't show it. Armatus. Armatus. Wait, 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 wait. We want to do steel path. That was close. There we go. Steel path armatus. Level 155 to 160. So you'll see that it's pretty good. And I quite like it. Now that I think about it, I don't think Viral actually works on these guys because they are not flesh. So Viral wouldn't be important here. But if you're doing something else against enemies that are flesh, like the disruption on ours, then Viral is actually going to be an extremely important thing to have. I don't remember. Yeah, squares. Squares, the ability that gives you that. We might as well build up our energy as well because, well, you know, we need energy. Otherwise, we can't cast our abilities. That would be unfortunate. So we'll, we'll just sit here and build energy while we kill some stuff. My biggest problem with this build right now is right there. That, that right there. I knew that was going to happen. Survivability does tend to be an issue at times. You need to be able to move a lot, just constant moving. Otherwise, you will get killed quite fast. And we don't want that, because, you know, dying means you can't kill stuff, which means you'll fail the mission. Wow, that was close. Now, if you could fit Rolling Guard into the build, like replace something that you felt like you didn't need, that would be a big, big help here. But... I forgot to do that, and so here we are. 
as long as we can make it to the point where I can show it off, that's what matters. We don't actually need to be invincible. As long as we can show off killing a Demolus, you'll get the gist of things. Again, this build is not of my own creation, this is just my own twist on it. The original creator, or at least who I assume came up with it, Cat, uh, Voltaz, he is very good YouTuber. I recommend subscribing to him if you like watching level caps. Okay, so we go in. Armor strip. Uh, oh, does the... Wow, that's embarrassing. The armor strip does not seem to work on them like that. Still, though, we can apply all of that. We break out our Excalibur blade. Did, did you see? I don't know why there was a massive delay on those heat box there, but did you see that big, big PP damage? Those massive ticks? Yeah, it's quite strong. Very, very strong. So normally, you can actually, or at least when I watch the video of him taking it against the Mars Disruption level cap, and in my testing, I could have sworn you could full trip the Demolus that were Grenier, but I guess perhaps you cannot full trip with the the Unero ability. Focus School, though, it obviously didn't matter a whole lot there. You, He still got absolutely destroyed. Though I suppose that might make it quite a pain to deal with them at level cap since you cannot fully armor strip. You could armor strip more, it, like if you go for corrosive, if ability armor strips don't work and you go for corrosive instead. Now they cap out at full stacks, just like acolytes and all status effects, I believe. So having like green shards to strip more armor won't work because you can't hit, get to the 14 stacks. But somebody that can strip more armor would be Hydroid, because his passive makes it so the first stack of his corrosive, when he attacks an enemy, strips more armor. Normally it's like 26% on the first stack, and every stack afterwards it's another 6%, I think. But with Hydroid specifically, it's like 50%? Or no, wait, let me think. Yeah, 44% armor strip on the first corrosive proc, so with Hydroid you could actually strip more than half of their armor, even though you could only apply four corrosive procs. But we're not talking about that. We're not showing off Hydroid right now. I want to show off at least one more Demless, but wow, I'm not getting a lot of kills, I'm not getting any keys, which is unfortunate because that's going to make this video longer. I know a lot of people don't like to watch long videos. I personally actually really like long videos. I know most people don't, and I can understand why. Not everyone's got all the time in the world. So if we could get a key, that would be great. If you don't want to wait for that, I would definitely suggest skipping to the point where we get a key, but I, I suck at editing, so I'm not going to trim this. It's really hard to do that on the PlayStation. And that's how I'm recording this in place. So, I recommend just skipping to the point where I end up actually finding a freaking key. Which will hopefully be sometime in the near future. Oh. Okay, I need it. So... Hang on, I'm brain farting right now. I thought there was a guy down there. Anyways. The build, if you aren't going to be able to armor strip, I'm, I'm, I think you could, should still be able to effectively kill enemies in the high end, right? Like a level cap with this. I'm fairly certain you will. It's just going to take a bit more. Because if you go and watch Bolt has his build against the level cap disruption Grenier, it, dude, it decimates them. Like he is, he's overkilling on damage by a pretty fair bit. And again, with the three, the more enemies, we're not even going to prime him. We're just going to go right in. And it, as you can see, it it destroys them. And the, if you prime them and you have like a good amount of enemies hit with your radial javelin with the augments, you are gonna do some massive, massive heat procs, like millions of damage in a heat proc. It's pretty insane. It's not the strongest build in the game by any means, but it's fun, and it makes Excalibur viable. Why could I not go into my operator there? It was mega delayed. It's fine though, we'll just let us in. So, I'm not gonna finish this because I suck balls at the game. That's the gist of the build. It's quite juicy. I hope I explained it at least somewhat well. And if you want to see it, like, a, a slightly different, but the original build that Voltas did, I definitely recommend looking him up and watching his video. 
is very, very good. The only problem would be survivability. But like I said, while I was trying to show off the build, you can just try to fit something in instead. Like if you don't feel like you need energy, you could swap out Equilibrium for Rolling Guard. Or you could also swap out Blind Rage would actually help. I mean, you could... Which blind rage for transient fortitude, you'll lose a bit of strength, yes, but the, it will help your efficiency a lot. So then you won't really have a problem with energy, and then you can get rid of equilibrium and put in rolling guard instead. That would help a lot for survivability. And then if you really wanted to get or go into survivability, you could get rid of your, one of your arcanes, like arcane strike, you could put on arcane ages instead. That should more than likely fix the survivability. I find Rolling Guard and Arcane Aegis together. That, like, if you're fast and you're moving around a lot, that's going to help you survive most of the time. So that's the gist of the build. I know I didn't do great showing it in mission, but that's because I suck at the game. But I hope the explanation was at least decent. So, again, thanks for watching. Go watch Voltaz's video. His was much better. And if you enjoyed the content, then maybe subscribe. If you don't, leave a fat dislike on the video so that I know that this was doo-doo water. Adios.